Welcome to this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. I'm joined by Clark. Ba-da-ba. And I'm Curtis. And if you've been following us or listening to our episodes for the past 28 or so, we're excited to finally do a movie that I think everyone's been waiting for. It's a classic. When you think of killers, you think of Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and Leprechaun. And Warwick Davis, yeah. Mr. Davis. But, unfortunately, we're not giving you guys a good one. We're going to give you guys the bad one first. There we're is, doing... There's no good one. <laughs> we're do... there That's bullshit. No good that one. is bullshit, and I will argue... There is the no of... good Leprechaun movie. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. That's the... No, That's I'm the gonna, only I'm going to have to argue that this is probably one of the best ones. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, maybe because my childhood, I have yeah. more nostalgia to these films, okay? But... I mean, man, like, I fucking love Leprechaun. I know, I did I did too. I loved it originally, and then I rewatched the first one, and it's just, there's a lot of things that, I don't know, we could talk about when we actually we'll review get the there. film. We'll get but there, yeah. this one kind of felt like they are self-aware, they know what the movies are, they they put the right, because Warwick Davis' character, he's all about the, the jokes, the quips, the one-liners. The rhymes, yeah. Yeah, he's all about messing with people. Uh, Leprechaun 2, he searches for a wife. Leprechaun 1, he's searching for his gold. Leprechaun 3, he's in Vegas. Um, Leprechaun 4, he's in space. As we continue our movie horror movies in space month, maybe are we even beginning it? I don't even know, man. I don't even remember at this point. We recorded so many things in so many weeks. Well, last week's episode was There's Nothing Out There. That's right. space. Something comes from space. That's true. It's this true. week's episode is Leprechaun 4 in space. Uh, yesterday, if you guys checked it out, we did a bonus episode, Jason X, Jason in space. And we're not going to tell you guys what next week's or the week after that's episode is, but they are also space related. Um, space. So I'm going to do a quick review here real quick. This is a great corny B, B grade horror movie. Like if you want to watch something and just know not to take it seriously, but at the same time just understand people are going to die in kind of weird ways, and there's going to be random boobs. This is for you. Yeah, one set of random boobs. Yeah, but there there were a death sentence. Those boobs were a death sentence. Damn right they are. No woman would ever freely just show you their boobs and not expect you to die afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> It's how goofy she looked. How did, what did you think about like I, how they made her an alien? And... So, I mean, I love these movies way too much to really take them seriously. It's like a fair. Star Trek <laughs> alien, though, yes. like, where they paint them, like, paint, they paint her with uh, yellow... They sprayed her with glitter, first of all. Yes. Her entire body is sparkly. She's got weird gold accent paint all yes. over her. Even her boobs. Um, and I just, I can't take it seriously. Every time I see it... I forget it's coming. It comes, and I'm like, "That wasn't even what? What the fuck was that?" It's just like enjoy them while they last. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's weird. Why? While they last? Yeah, no, she didn't while say that. He was a person last. She didn't say that. But <laughs> all right. So, Leprechaun Four in Space is from 1996. Right. The director was Brian Trenchard Smith. Um, he also directed Leprechaun Three. Mm-hmm. So he got three and four. Um, the writer, uh, Mark Jones, credit due where credit is due. That's the original writer for Leprechaun. And Dennis Pratt. Dennis Pratt did Nightman, mm-hmm. Leprechaun 4, and Rumple fucking Stiltskin. You're welcome. So he's the one that wrote all the one-liners for Rumple Stiltskin yep. and moved them into Leprechaun. That makes so much yep. sense. Those one-liners in Rumple Stiltskin <laughs> were... Terribly delivered, and having Warwick Davis as Rumpelstiltskin would have made that movie a lot more enjoyable. Yep. Instead of that made-for-TV BS. I think he was a little busy doing uh, Willow, though, at the time. Budget was $1.6 million. $1.6 million. And body count is nine. And I noted them as we went through, so hopefully... So much less than Jason, and it was only within a five-year period. $1.6 million versus eleven. Yeah. Leprechaun movies always operate on a low budget. They don't need a big budget. Was this even in the theater? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. This it had to had to have been had to. Have I mean, been. it's Warwick Davis. Yeah, box office one point six million. 
don't give us a little a whole lot of more information here, but meh. Meh is correct. Well, let me give you the uh, the uh, hellos, how are yous? Do yeah, let's that? do it. Let's, that? No, let's do it. Let's how you, are you? What do you got going on this week? What'd you do? Oh, man. Uh, How's life? How's working out? You look like you're losing tons of weight, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I have lost about... Uh, this isn't even something I was really planning on talking about. I, I'm about 206 down from 235. So I'm about 29 right now. You're losing the weight and I'm finding it. Um, yeah, well, you know, going to the gym, meeting healthy. So how about you, Ben? I'm doing good. I am fully recovered from my uh, ear ache and back at the gym as well. I went yesterday. Today's my rest day. I'll be back tomorrow. That is good to hear, Hopefully, sir. Hopefully I can get some weight off as well. Oh, my joints will. will be happy. Oh, you're going to get so much weight. <laughs> you're you're going to lose it all. You're going to lose that little baby you're, I'm you're lose, packing right I'm there. Lose my small child. Your small child. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so I think, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed this movie. So I what's really. Your quick review. I can't give it one. That was it. It was just, this is what Jason X should have been. Jason X almost hit the mark with its premarital sex kind of uh fourth wall breaking yeah this movie nailed it, it the did. whole film was just breaking the fourth Literally. wall and it was you could tell it was low budget it was a low budget space marine film and all of their their equipment was just like low budget movie crap like they had headsets from like walkmans with the little I would, speakers i wouldn't and, be surprised if it was stuff laying around from other films that the studio had worked on i think i i, I mean that would be amazing that would make sense to me Okay, well, uh, quick synopsis so everyone understands what this movie is about. And I'm going to do this as fast as I can so we can break down scenes that we loved and kind of walk slower through everything. But that way that the, you know, the listeners slash viewers get a chance to, to get the quick synopsis. So you have a group of space marines. They go to get this creature, this thing. They don't really know what it is. They never call it a leprechaun. That is something that is actually, they never call him in this movie. Well, he's um, alien. They call him alien. Monster, bastard, or and some other combination of, of this. Yes. Um, so, so, anyways, they stumble upon him, um, sweet talking his soon to be wife, and they decide to crash that dinner. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second because that's messed up. He finally got her to agree to marry him, and they're ruining this. Why? Just let him be. He's not hurting you. I don't know why they went after him in the first place. That for, for the doctor, right? For the prof- or uh, the main doctor. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're they're on contract with Doctor Mittenhand to go capture this monster. Yeah. But I don't know why, and I think that's what you. I think that's what you're leading. To. I don't. I don't get any of that. I don't. I don't. That doesn't make sense. I don't. They're like they're going there to get something. They're fighting something. They they rescue some princess and they're like oh this princess is from this kingdom and at first i thought they were going there to rescue her and then it turns out they had no idea she was there they didn't even know she was there (laughs) and then like the leprechaun jumps on top of a grenade to save her dumb life and because he loves her and she passes out and they rescue her they call her a casualty even though she's not dead yeah um they call her a casualty several several times and that she's definitely not dead I mean, do we know that right off the bat? Yeah. Yeah, she says she's not dead. She picks her up and she's like, oh, she's still stable. We're going to take her still in. Still stable, yeah. And then she's like, how's the casualty? And she's like, she's resting. Yeah. Um, that, poor, it, poor choice of words, writers. It's, well, there, there are a couple of goofs like that. Listen, Princess Zarina isn't dead. That's the most important part. She and she's going to be queen one day. She long, The king is dead. Long live so the that's, queen. So that's your, that's your whole movie plot. That's your setup. That's what, that's what gets us started. Well, the leprechaun wants to get married so he can rule yeah. his own kingdom. He wants people to Unfortunately, worship Unfortunately, he protects the princess's life at the cost of his own and gets blown to bits and pieces. Well, and then a marine pees on him and he gets the clap. From the leprechaun. The leprechaun gives him his magic clap. Gonna sif a herpa clap. Gonna sif a herpa clap. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't even write that one down. That was just ready was, I, 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 I noticed. So, Sergeant Hooker makes a big deal about a female being assigned to his team, yet there's literally another woman on the team already. You notice that? Yeah, but she's a Marine. Very um, 90s feel, though. Like, you're a woman, but you're not this woman who's a badass. You're just a woman. 
Well, he's he's a, she's a science nerd. That guy's just so over the overacting on on the sergeant is the the master sergeant. He's who, not even human. No, we we don't know that yet. <laughs> yeah, he's just like. You will go ahead and do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Oh, I'll tell you what. They're kind of like a drill sergeant. The entire movie. Yeah. It's just, okay, good, sure, overacting. But what happens to him later on more than makes up for his character. It just makes him probably one of the better characters in the film. I, I think it rounds out his character beautifully. <laughs> um, okay, so we <laughs> We get, uh, I don't want to speed too fast. We're going to walk through this nice and no, slow because sure. I love it. So we, we, we get that. The guy, the guy pisses on him and then uh, the, the, the leprechaun energy fires into his penis. Uh, right. And they make the joke. I didn't write the joke down though, damn it. But it is, it's a, it's well, a. Well, they see him. Well, it's like a chlamydia joke or whatever. And he's yeah. Like, I would have helped you there, but it looks like you already got it. It's like. <laughs> Damn it. Well, they see it happen. Too. Oh, I give you a round like... of applause, but I see you already got the clap. That's what he says. And I was like, yes, great joke. Yeah. That's the quote I wrote down. Okay, I found it. Sorry. So they take Golden Nugget from his cave. They take all of his gold. They take all of it. Well, they're harvesting it, right? So they called out to a miner who's going to be there the next morning to finish getting all the gold out of the walls. Right, right. But right. they took like... A sample, like a large nugget, and then they use the shrink ray on it. We get to see well, the they, shrink ray. But they also took all of his the gold. Jewels, that, yeah, the jewels, yeah, and they shrunk yeah. those, and those were all consolidated into like lumps too. Yep, that's right. Because she has at the end or whatever. There's like four nuggets sitting on that tray, or five nuggets. Yeah, or whatever. they've been yeah. shrunk. They've been kind of whatever's happened to that. He introduces the. Why shrink. does the tip of the shrink ray look like a dildo? I think that was on purpose. Because you saw it too, I, right? I think it was on okay. purpose, yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. Like, they, the shrink ray shows up and Dr. – not the doctor, his assistant. Harold. Harold, who is uh, I'll never something Grossman. He's my favorite character. Harold. Gary Grossman. He is, uh, he gets kind of handled at one point by the uh, the sergeant – or not the sergeant, the younger guy. And he's like, yeah. I'm going to – and he's like, don't hold, grab me unless – don't touch me unless you mean it. <laughs> <laughs> and he calls him something like pretty boy or something. And then he kisses towards him or something. Yeah. And then walks off. <laughs> Guy's uh, very uh, sexually engaged for everyone. Everyone. Regardless of sex, gender, or how they look. But he is, uh, he is probably my favorite character in this movie. Oh, right? hands down. Um, okay, so K.O. is trying to hook up with Dolores at this point. Because they're all celebrating. They're having a night off. Drinking right. in the tavern. Which is on a spaceship. Right, and she keeps touching his pee-pee. Yeah, she keeps wanting that like, penis. he's like, no, that hurts. Stop. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Take it home with you? Um, <laughs> so the leprechaun bursts out of his penis. But he comes out of a hole. But they want to look like he comes out oh of a Oh my god, penis. but it was, it was I, I think, for a practical effect, well done. Yeah, okay. It was like, a, it was, it was like a box that they put a, a sheet in, and then just filmed the angle of him coming out of the sheet, which is supposed to look like his fly yeah. and his boxers reaching up and breaking open yep um he breaks and the out. girl is right there on the other side so the effect the depth effect was fairly good huh. uh, it was, okay it was all right it wasn't bad it wasn't the shitty parts when you can see the wire but it's like the boob scene in the the vegas leprechaun where he makes the lady's boobs grow, grow until she blows up yeah but that was her wish hmm. he's a genie grant and wishes at that point leprechaun three will get there one day yeah. Next St. Patty's Day. <sighs> so, my beef with this part, though, is when you see the line, because you can clearly see the wire. Like, I wrote it down. This isn't even me, like, digging in for fun facts and trivia. This is literally me going, nope, you can see the wire right there as the leprechaun jumps when out. When flying? Camera. Yeah. I don't even think they care. At that point, probably not. It's the fourth film, and they're doing fine on money. <laughs> they're, they're saved a whole lot in making this movie. But then we get a little bit of John Wayne from the Leprechaun. He does his whole little... Um, damn it, I had the name of the movie in my head last night, but I forgot it. Anyways, does a little John Wayne Western quote there, which was funny. Most of the, the crew member at the, members at this point, they meet him and he just kills them. There's like random gun fighting scenes between him and them. Mm -hmm. It's like the Leprechaun's now a Marine too. Well... Why is he? Why is he hiding though? If he's immortal and he can't die, he's only looking he's, for the princess. I think he's just having a good time. Well, I mean that's his job, right? 
That's all you, he does. You pointed it out to me earlier. The leprechaun loves to tease and manipulate and just have fun. That's him. That's what he was doing. He was just sticking with people. Because a lot of times he's walk. They're all paired up. These Marines are paired up. Not unlike the idiots from yesterday's episode. These ones are all paired up. And he's kind of following them throughout the different areas of the ship. And he's just watching them a lot of times. He's not even interacting right away. That's right. later on when he gets, you know, in deep. But I, th- I, think it, I think at this point he's just looking for Princess. He, he doesn't know where she is. He can't just zap to her. So he's just, I think, feeling everybody out and trying to see what what's kind of going on at that point. Um, but we also find out about the Princess. Zanira has regenerative. She's got regenerative DNA. DNA. Because her hand heals. And Dr. Mittenhouse wants that DNA and tells Harold to keep that shit quiet and don't tell anybody. Yeah. Mistake number one. Well, whatever it is that happens, like during these these scenes, the main Marine and the main heroine of the film, who is uh, well known if you're uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Fran, I... They're having their kind of off and on, like, sexual tension rebuttal. And her clothing is coming off more and more as the film progresses. To the point where she's just wearing panties and her shirt. Uh, as as these movies go. So I missed whatever happened when her bottoms got ripped off. I legitimately must have looked away. It was when Dr. Middenhand was, uh, anyhow. Okay. We'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. I... They, it's when she gets the, the cut in her leg, like around that time. Oh, okay. It's, I don't know. Dr. Mittenhand kind of reveals himself to everyone at this point beforehand. And he's just like a, if you've played Fallout, the original Fallout game, he is the master. He is a disembodied head and like upper torso as well as a, I want to say right arm. Yeah. And that's when he bangs on the damn machine many times. Yeah. So over the top. He is probably the most over the top character in the film. And whatever he does, he's like, he apparently wants to heal himself with this DNA, this Zanira's DNA. She gets woken up. The leprechaun saves her. They, she and the leprechaun both leave. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know at this point like i don't even know what to do or what to think because he, he takes a spider and a scorpion he puts them in a blender with her dna and then he injects it into dr mittenhand's brain yeah i i mean you keep going you're doing great so this is where uh, there's there's a book it's a it's i think it's written by nietzsche uh where this guy he's it might not be for Nietzsche. It might, it's it's a German book. I don't remember the author, but this character he he turns into a, like a gigantic cockroach or beetle or something like that, hmm. and his transformation is so terrifying nobody will come to take care of him. So he ends up anyhow. This guy kind of turns into a spider, scorpion, mm-hmm. human hybrid, and it's just completely off the top insane. Cyborg too. There's a little bit of metal in his... That's right. That's yeah. right. He is kind of still... He's still part of machine because there's the glowing Every, lights yeah. all over him. The yeah. regenerative the regenerative DNA still required certain things to be there that are, you know, probably working like, uh, I don't know, a normal eyeball? I, I don't know because it's right there on his eye, it looks like. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely a piece of him is not as human as he was before. It was just so weird. Well, so he, you blew through a lot of yeah. Well, the leprechaun wouldn't have even gotten in there if he didn't <laughs> pretend to be a topless, attractive woman. Mm-hmm. Well, he yeah. pretended to be Tina mm-hmm. outside the door. Right. <laughs> I, like, I blew. I jumped. I just skipped right through things. So go right ahead. <laughs> well, let's just catch up the deaths. That's all I care about. Mm-hmm. So our third death in the film is when they go into the contamination room, the flesh eating bacteria or whatever, right. which is basically the cleanup room, and Mooch gets. Uh, his suit cut open and then ends up getting eaten and that's probably the worst practical effect in the whole movie is the skeleton in the damn suit the bloody skeleton but like you said they don't care they're just having fun probably at this point right so that's when the sergeant goes and threatens to leave doctor comes out um the the first wall that opens in the doctor's door has two statues on it by the way i didn't notice this until afterwards 
So there's two statues on the door that opens when the doctor comes out. And if you look at those statues, they're actually just the upper torso and head of a man. Both of them. Mm. Which is symbolism for him. I and that's also that. where he's hiding behind. Hmm. Which is kind of funny. Um, it could be total coincidence, but I just realized it last night when I was watching it. Um, our main protagonist gets handcuffed by the leprechaun while they're out searching for him. Yeah, the... But, uh... But waits 35 to 60 seconds just to shoot the damn handcuffs off. I'm like, come on, man. The guy who is contractually obligated to take off his shirt and show off his abs. Constantly. Yeah, just as uh, the uh, Dr. Tina Tina was required to have her clothing slowly fall off as well. I mean, it's just part of the story, man. Yeah. Our well, fourth kill is, oh, Danny boy. All right, right. He gets smashed by the cargo container because he was... Uh, you know, trying to be a tricksy bastard. Mm. And uh, these hobbitses don't do not do that. Well, the leprechaun was being the tricksy one. He, he was like, come over here. Yeah, but he thought he was going to be one-upping him. He had the gun pointed. He was ready to go. But as soon as, he got, knew. Yeah, as soon as he got in the spot, Warwick dropped the bomb on him. Crushed. Fifth kill. Dolores falls to her death. That was probably the saddest That kill. was the worst kill because they blow him up. She kills him. Yeah. She blows him in half. And he pops up, and then he just, she falls down, and then he does the this little piggy thing, like Looney Tunes. Yeah. That's a Looney Tunes scene. It's been done by Bugs Bunny. But now it's been done by, by the leprechaun. leprechaun. <laughs> yep. So she falls and is just dead. No body, just gone. Probably the character I like the most. Yeah, she was uh, genuinely heartfelt. Probably, I don't know, I felt like she could act. Aside from well. Gary Grossman's uh, Harold, I liked I liked her character. So then this is where Dr. Mittenhouse meets Leprechaun for the first time and laughs at how small he is. But then he starts to share with him, like, we're both evil. Like, we could do a lot of things together. Well, the Leprechaun hit Gary before this, right? Or he stabs him. Gary is... Gary Grossman's the actor. He's uh, Harold. Harold. The pie face? Yes. Um, so he. this is before he turns into a pie face. He stabs him, and so Gary pulls out the... So during this... It's right the, after... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah right so here. the doctor's trying to distract the leprechaun at this part. Yes. When he's doing the whole... We, we, before he blends yes, in the... Yes, exactly. The yep. So Gary pulls the thing out of his chest, and he stabs the leprechaun. He's like, oh, you found it for me. And it was his cane. Yeah, which was a blade attached to it. Damn. He pulls it out, and he picks up the little tin... And he turns the guy into a pizza face. Yes. Flattened Which face. reminds me of the movie Spy Kids mm. when they, they're they fighting this this evil guy who creates these claymation characters. Pee Wee Herman. No. Claymation characters. It was Tony Shalhoub. And then... <laughs> it was Pee Wee Herman was the main guy, was the main villain in that movie until Tony Shalhoub became. Oh, in Spy yeah. Kids? Yeah, yeah. That's Pee Wee Herman. That's Pee Wee Herman? That's Pee Wee Herman. That's awesome. I never knew that. He looked so different. Um, and then you said Tony Shalhoub? Tony Shalhoub is the uh, his assistant. Is the actually real the evil, evil genius. Yeah. yeah. So when he gets recreated, it reminds me of that pizza face. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Harold's the sixth kill. Then the leprechaun blends the DNA of spider scorpion, blah, blah, blah. We get the crazy-ass doctor. Now... Here that is Clark's doctor, favorite part in the movie. Well, the movie. self-destruct sequence is started by the spider scorpion Crazy thing. scorpion spider thing, yeah. Well, he's starting to lose uh, all of his like human thoughts. Oh my god, and that's so... The way he's doing is like, I must have flies. Yeah, he's... <laughs> It's like grabbing it's like, flies. So the spider and... is more dominant than the scorpion at that point? Because scorpions don't eat flies. They actually eat crickets and cockroaches. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but this is your sergeant moment. Right. The sergeant, he is uh, he's manipulated and he's mind controlled by the leprechaun. Yes. And he has now decided that he is a feminine marine. And he decides to dress and drag more of a an early 2000s drag style than the current one we have right now. And he's confused i would say he's half marine half half woman and can't decide what he is and he's beating the crap out of everyone else yeah this is probably his his moment to shine in this whole film 
I think this rounds out his character. His over the top acting was very necessary for this scene. Yeah. Sergeant Drag. Then uh, Dr. Mittenhan is officially now Dr. Mitten Spider. Mm. That has been confirmed. And we get our seventh death. Sergeant sticks a fork in a light socket. All right. So Leprechaun and Princess are searching for his gold. So now, yeah. now basically he wants to get his gold back before they leave. It is imperative that they get the gold. Right. Before they leave. <laughs> and he puts a force field around the only escape ship the, because yeah. he doesn't want his wife leaving him, is my assumption. Because he says, oh, it's in case no, somebody leaves tries to leave without us. You dumb bitch. And she's like, what? He's like, oh, my I God, said yeah. you're going to be rich. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the underhanded uh, comments are great in this movie. Well, he, he says, like, I'm going to kill her after I kill her father. And then she's like... I like him. Too bad he won't. Too bad he's not going to live or whatever. Yeah, she's going to throw a funeral for him. Um, so Books and Tina, they fight the leprechaun in the cargo bay, but Tina accidentally enlarges the leprechaun. Yep. And now we get the biggest leprechaun in space. So he's he's looking for them. He's like picking things up and shaking them. And he can't find anyone. Do the, the experimental enlargement ray. So he's he's big for the rest of the film. Yep. Um, and so he's during, made it. He's officially big. They shoot him. Checks his pants. Yep. He's happy. Tina, during this scene, she's crawling through the ducts and she meets Dr. Mittenhand, who's now Spider Scorpion Dr. Mittenhand. And he slices off her. He, he takes off her panties and he, her, her skirt or whatever and he tries to eat it. And he's like, oh, this isn't good. And he throws it and then he scratches her leg. So now she's only wearing panties and a shirt. And she and the black marine, who's doing nothing but racial-based jokes that would be completely outdated by 2096 or whatever year it is, over and over again, they freeze Dr. Mittenhand with liquid nitrogen. Sticks. Yes, sticks. And then they freeze sticks, and then they they get the self-destruct sequence, gets turned off, and then... Uh, during this time, they finally open the hatch doors. The guy who's facing off against the leprechaun o- opens up the uh, the main hatch, right? And sends him off into space. Yes. Where he explodes. He, he tells Styx to open cargo bay door two. And then they go and they get in a little nook and cranny where they're not going to get sucked out. Um, but it will suck him out. Right. And he does. Sucks him and out into space. He blows up. He blows up. just looks so d- bad. And then as it looked the, uncomfortable. as the three they they look at his body the you see the gigantic leprechaun hand clenched in a fist flip them off same to you buddy <laughs> same to you which is also a very classic scene when you talk to anyone who knows about the leprechaun series they always bring up leprechaun in space and that space middle finger yeah it is a great uh, end to this film in my opinion uh, really rounds out exactly what they did to you. They fucked you. Don't you just love it whenever they're trying to figure out a password and then they find out that it's connected to the ego in the most random way? The password was wizard. And why did that even matter? It didn't. <laughs> did it? Uh, no, I don't. I can't. I couldn't put together why wizard was important or how we got there. Was, was it. Because they go through a thought process in their head or whatever. I don't remember what they said because it was so asinine. But, like, the password doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Well, <clears throat> that's it. Credits. Roll scenes. Done. Good movie. Time for fun facts and trivia. So, the first one that I have wasn't found in the IMDb fun facts and trivia yeah. area. It was actually found... Um, in one of the little like blurbs about the movie or whatever. But Quentin Tarantino is quoted saying that director Brian Smith is one of his favorite directors all time. Hmm. So the guy who directed this film is one of Quentin Tarantino's favorites. Why, why is that? I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. What else has Brian done? We talked about it at the beginning. 
He directed number three and number four of Leprechaun. And when I went trying to dig and find anything else that was actually good... Drive Hard? I, I, Tyrannosaurus Azteca? Aztec, Aztec Rex. Rex? Arctic Blast. The Dragon Flies. He's got some Kung Fu, I think, down there. A lot there. of bad movies here. A it, lot. BMX Bite Bandits. Kung Fu Killers. Oh, uh, no. The Making of Stone. They, these are all BBC these UK films. These are all B-movies. Yeah. So I, I really don't get it, but... Uh, but whatever, you know, whatever. Quentin Tarantino, you're you're allowed to like whatever you want to like. I still like your movies. Maybe but he's worked with them. I think you got bad taste for directors, man. I don't know about that. I think he did a great job with this movie. I think this movie is good. I think the rest <laughs> of what he's done is not. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm not <sighs> judging. Hey, uh, just in case, you know, he's paying attention to us, Brian, I'm sorry for, for what Curtis said. He doesn't mean any ill will. He just, he's not familiar with the rest of your work. <laughs> Fun fact number two. Eric Avari was considered for the role of Dr. Mittenhand. Yes. Uh, who is Eric Avari? He's from Stargate, in Independence Day, The Mummy, and Planet of the Apes. He I is the... Um, he, is he the weird guy with the kind Middle of... Middle Eastern. Is he um, the guy with the hair? No, he's bald, actually. Avari. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He was in Prince of Persia, too. Yes, yeah. yes, that guy. He's a really good actor. No, he's fantastic. He could have been the Doc. I don't. Know. I don't know if he would have been good as the Doc. No, would have been weird. Um, yeah. So the sound of the doors opening and closing are taken from the Doom video game, where it was the sound of the elevators. Well, just the door. No, everything. The door. That is the so sound they, of the doors. Like the... I'm gonna trust you because you played yeah. Doom. But the fun fact says it's just the elevator. I won't. Bullshit. But they have the sound of the elevators too. But they also have the sound of the doors. Yeah opening and closing but yeah and the last piece of trivia because there isn't really a lot to this yeah is the title character is never referred to as a leprechaun in the entire film only nope. as alien monster bastard but never leprechaun great and that's it that's all i got so uh no it's we've, we've had fun had a lot of fun with this movie just going through it kind of what would you say is your favorite scene your favorite kill in the whole film Favorite kill yeah. or favorite scene? Favorite kill or scene. Um, I'm going to go with <laughs> K, uh, with, is it KO peeing out Warwick Davis? That's got to be, that's got to be my favorite kill for sure. Favorite scene. I don't know. The drag, the drag scene was kind of, was a lot of fun. It was a lot and of fun. And watching Sarge get dragged out like that, i don't know that was good he gotta show his feminine side he did that was probably my favorite scene <laughs> i can't i can't do justice to the way he he overacted there yeah it's fantastic it good. i i would say my favorite whole whole scene that tied the whole movie together was him just fucking with the guy saying oh how about we team up uh I, you know just just become partners and then he just drops the thing on top of him because he knows he's gonna tram yeah i mean you could see it in his eyes that's the other thing is like i have to give Warwick Davis so much credit like he did so many leprechaun films and didn't have to that's he's the best part he had fun doing he them. wanted to yeah and you he's can really willing, tell he's willing to do more these weren't money grabs these weren't you know soulless pieces of work as we've mentioned before in the business especially when it comes to horror movies these are passion projects for some people and you can tell he really had a lot of fun with it so thank you Warwick you were you were awesome um and and it's Brian so Smith, like, if you are listening, Mr. Director, I love this movie. And Clark's right. I haven't seen any of your other work. Um, we'll have to see Aztec Rex. Maybe I'll have <laughs> to go down the list and find more stuff for you, for me to watch. Because I've seen two of your films for sure. Leprechaun 3 and 4. And they're phenomenal. I love them. <laughs> These, I love how the mythos means absolutely nothing to Leprechaun. It doesn't matter what you do. Like, it's just going to change around. Yeah. Uh, Anyhow, this movie is great. Going to kind of jump into Curtis. What are you up to? Do you have anything you've read, seen, viewed lately? I just bought the whole Berkeley Street book series. The Berkeley Street book series. Yeah, it's what that, is that ghost guy. It's the ghost hunter, the ex marine ghost hunter. The ex marine ghost. I remember uh, you talked about that dude, before. I'm sucked in, man. I now have book three through nine on my Kindle. <laughs> I am currently in three. They're in a small town. Um, small western town 
where these two kids were making moonshine and got clapped by a ghost, and Ooh, then now, the yeah, they got the clap. They got too. the uh, leprechaun. Clap. It's going around, the and uh, yeah, so it's it's quite interesting. Mm. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Like I said before, if you guys like it, or if you like my opinion on stuff, and you like to read, and supernatural is your thing, like this is a really fun series so far. So, um, yeah, that's my fun thing for the week. Nice man. Anything from you, Seth? Uh, you know what? Whenever whenever this question comes around to me, I, I'm like, oh, there's tons of stuff I'm doing, but I can never pinpoint the one thing. I would have to say I'm replaying Final Fantasy VII, and I know like video games are kind of like I talk about them all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I get it. I'm in my 30s. I play a lot of video games, uh, but I'm replaying Final Fantasy VII because the remake is coming out at the end. I believe it's it's sometime this year. It's I think it's either March or. Later on in June, I'm not, I wasn't. I haven't really been paying attention. I just know it's coming. But yeah, yeah, so I've decided to just kind of play through the original again, just to. How many times have you bought Final Fantasy VII in your lifetime? How many times have I bought it? Yeah, like personally, twice. Different platforms, twice. only twice. Okay. I no. I, I. This is not a bragging moment. This is me going. Oh my god! I buy this game way too many times because mm-hmm. I've bought it for like the original PS One, mm-hmm. the seven disc series, whatever. Four um, discs. Four discs. Or three? The, is it? I don't know. Three or four. I was young. My brother played it more than I did. Um, jealousy. Yes, I'm jealous. Uh, I have it for the PS4. I know I bought it for my PS3. It's on the Switch. Um, I have it for Steam. I... So I have it at least four damn times. I have it on Steam, but I want to bought it. Eventually, I'll get... You know, there's a mod it's called New Threat. It makes the game harder a little bit. They improve the story a little bit. I need so to, I need to beat it still, yeah. is my point. <laughs> yeah. I got to stop buying it and just beat it. So. Right. Thank you for bringing that up, because I really like Final Fantasy VII, and maybe I will play that tonight. We'll see. Cool. Well, um... Ready for plugs? Time to plug! All right, guys. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Two Guys Some Horror Pod. That's the number two, Guys Horror Pod. You can also email us, send us DMs, send us whatever you would like. Please don't send us anything inappropriate or illegal. <laughs> but, you know, if you do, that's uh, that's on you. <laughs> you can email us at the word two guys and some horror at gmail.com. That is two as in the word T W O guys and some horror at gmail.com. And we'll read anything you send us on, on air. Mm-hmm. Anything. Send it our way. So well, I will well, I mean, I'll pretend that I read it and you'll be like, Hey, did you get that email sent? And I'll be like, Yeah, of course I did. It was great. Could you remind me what it was? And I'll stop and right as there. always, <laughs> if you want to be a guest on the show, those are also the same exact ways to hit us up. Yes. We've already got a couple of requests in the next couple of months. We know we're going to have Mimic back. He was on the John Carpenter's Vampires episode, if you missed it. Um, he'll be back in June for my favorite horror movie of all time. Not telling you what it is. Uh, stick around. That's um, uh, Pokemon, right? Pokemon Mewtwo movie. Po- <laughs> we love and appreciate all of your guys' support. We thank you so much for uh, listening to us each and every week. And uh, we will see you guys next week for our next Space Pick. Thanks again. You have a wonderful day. Peace. <laughs>